world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. I have not seen one example where, which really could convince me, though I like to read these stories like everybody else, yeah, which could really convince me that uh, uh, life uh, uh, from somewhere else in the universe has contacted us. I think a sizable proportion of the population believe that um, we've already been visited by aliens and the government are aware of this and for some reason, some bizarre reason, they're not, not revealing this. Actually, it's not stupid to think that there's life somewhere else, in whatever form. I'm not glued to the idea that human beings are unique, that the Earth is unique in such a huge universe. It's a serious subject to CNES, the French space agency. Since 1977, all unidentified aerospace phenomena sighted from France are investigated in Toulouse by GEPON, the department which studies these reports. The strength of JPAR, I think, is to have a scientific methodology to call on experts in various different fields who are interested in these phenomena. In Sheffield, in the north of England, David Clark is a journalism professor. He investigates reports of UFO sightings in depth. The reports were declassified by the UK Ministry of Defence in 2005. You've got everything in there from sort of just your basic lights in the sky and shapes in the sky, right down to people who believe that they've been in telepathic contact with aliens or been abducted by aliens. Most of the reports were simply logged and filed away. Very, very few investigated in any depth. In contrast to the French, the British authorities seem to have taken UFOs a bit lightly, even when there were intriguing, credible cases, like the 1994 sighting of a mysterious glowing object very close up. The man's car was immobilized, and he suffered skin burns. This is one of the more interesting reports. As you can see, this is the entire report in the Royal Air Force archives. Two pieces of paper. David Clark's study of the British UFO archives has led him to be sceptical about UFOs. 90 to 95 percent of the reports that have been received by official bodies can be explained by the whole range of the usual things, aircraft, balloons, fireballs burning up in the atmosphere, space junk, birds, that kind of thing. Yeah. But recently, there has been a wave of UFO sightings across Europe. The abundance of proof has, however, helped to identify them as, for example, little balloons released by the Asian community during celebrations. Pilots often report seeing red things, cloudy red shapes, or not cloudy at all, cylindrical or saucer-shaped. Scientists who have studied these reports now tell us that this can be caused by storms, by what we call red sprites, which could be seen at high altitudes. Uh, These explanations are unlikely to convince either side of the debate, however, because both UFO believers and disbelievers are entrenched in their positions. One night in October 1996, um, there was um, a group of police officers looking out over the North Sea and they could see these revolving coloured lights in the sky and they were convinced it was a UFO. Um, there was a call then to the, um, the Royal Air Force um, Air Defence. Lo and behold something on radar directly over Boston in Lincolnshire where the police were. That looks like something impressive. You've got sightings by police, you've got things on radar. That light in the sky was still visible as dawn broke when it vanished into the background of the sky with all the other stars and that's what it was, a bright star or a planet. Royal Greenwich Observatory when they got the video straight away said planet Venus. on radar was the, the tall spire of a church in Boston in Lincolnshire that creates a permanent echo. So that to me, that, that incident sums up UFOs. You know, because when you've got people who think there's something odd in the sky that can't be explained, suddenly lots of other people start looking up in the sky, seeing things that they would otherwise have ignored, and everything then is like fitted together as evidence that we're being visited by aliens. 
Since 1977, Japon has collected more than 2,200 reports, which they have investigated in partnership with the civil and military authorities. 23% of all events were then classified as unexplained. But only a dozen cases are classified as completely inexplicable. There's lots of charlatans involved in the subject of ufology, people who, who, are, who are out to make a lot of money by telling the public what they think the public want to hear, i.e. they've been visited by aliens and there's a huge cover-up. This has a knock-on effect in terms of, for example, air crew are reluctant to report things that they've seen um, because they're, they're worried about the effects it will have on their career if it becomes known that this is the pilot who sees flying saucers. Who wants to uh, fly with someone who's got that reputation? <laughs> Which is a shame because it's quite clear that pilots are the people who are, are likely to see these kinds of things. Therefore, they should be reporting not to the military. They should be reporting to scientists. <laughs> This is a famous case which has been widely reported in the press. In 1994, on an Air France flight between Nice and London, the pilot, the co-pilot and the steward, all three of them saw an object. Well, what is an object? An unidentified space phenomenon on their left, so they contacted the radar controller on the ground, and the radar people did actually see a trace which would cross the plane's trajectory. Japon did quite an in-depth report with the help of all sorts of experts, and this report concluded that there was no explanation for the sighting, so it was classified as a truly unexplained phenomenon. A été classé eh ben, par définition par le GEPAN en phénomène inexpliqué. If we believe in extraterrestrial visitors, that means a superior life form exists somewhere. At the University of Leiden in Holland, Pascal Ehrenfreund is a very well known astrobiologist. She regularly collaborates with the European Space Agency and with NASA. And this is uh, the ground control. There are only a few regions, I think, in the universe where you can really uh, form uh, planets, uh, rocky planets like the Earth, which could uh, harbor life. The Earth is a very special place uh, in our solar system. Additionally, uh, not only are we in a great habitable zone in our only solar system, we are also in a great habitable zone in our galaxy. On Earth, you had very... Uh, specific events which were driving the evolution in the direction of forming our, our, our intelligent humans. And it is very difficult to understand and to uh, reconstruct if that could actually happen on other planets in exactly the same way. All life as we know it starts with carbon. According to those who claim to have seen them, extraterrestrials are little green men with eyes and ears which logically must be made of carbon. Life is based on carbon chemistry on the Earth, and we do think that carbon is a very, very special molecule. It can form these complex three-dimensional structures, and uh, it is uh, very robust, and uh, it is just a key molecule for life. So uh, you could imagine that life is based on other elements as well, and that has been discussed a lot uh, in the literature and by scientists. But uh, it is really the question, can we actually detect it? And will we ever know? It's obviously a tricky subject. Many questions remain unanswered, and the answers we do have don't satisfy everyone. What is reality for some remains just a fairy tale to others. We want to know that we aren't alone, because it's quite lonely in the universe when there's only us, and we're desperate to find evidence of something out there, a greater sort of intelligence, something that a, a civilization that's uh, that's been around for much longer than we have, that's got over all those things that we've we're trouble with, you know, nuclear weapons, warfare, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Almost godlike, no different really from what people believed in the Middle Ages about angels and demons and God. You know, that's what it is, and I think I think people like to feel the, that comfort that there's something out there that's 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 look, keeping an eye on us, basically not really being the lonely planet. The idea is at once seductive and worrying. Perhaps one day we'll know the truth.